Hi, hello students. Welcome back to online class. Today I am going to teach geography lesson three, atmosphere. Okay. Already I have given uh, two lesson the question answer. I am thinking so you have learned. Next this today atmosphere. What do you mean by this atmosphere? Uh, you know, uh, it is the blanket of the earth that surround the earth. It's called the atmosphere. Okay. Listen carefully. Uh, topic is atmosphere. Geography lesson 3. Atmosphere. So, what do you mean by atmosphere? Atmosphere is the blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere. Okay. So, in this lesson, we are going to learn about the composition and structure of atmosphere, uh, um, troposphere and uh, structure of atmosphere. Under this structure of atmosphere, it, it is divided into five layers. What are the five layers? Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. So, next one is the weather and climate. Under weather and climate also, there are many factors that influence weather and climate. What are the factors that influence the weather and climate? Means, distance from the equator, altitude, nearness to the sea, nature of the prevailing winds, mountain barrier, cloud cover, ocean current, natural vegetations. So, today we are going to learn about these things only. Now we can learn, uh, we can go inside this lesson. So what are the objectives about this atmosphere means? The composition and structure of atmosphere and the differentiate weather and climate and the factors influencing weather and climate and the classification of clouds, wind and rainfall. First one we all know where we are living. We are living on the earth. So, already I taught earth is the unique planet okay, where life is found. Here, uh, why it is considered as a unique planet means here only we can live, the living things can live, the air is essential for the survival of all the living beings. Now, what do you mean by atmosphere? The blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere. So, where we can see this atmosphere, it is close to the earth by gravitational attraction. Okay, please students listen. What do you mean by atmosphere? Atmosphere is the blanket of air that surrounds the earth. Okay, next one is the composition of the atmosphere. What do you mean by this composition of atmosphere? You all know that atmosphere is a mixture of gases, water vapor and dust particle in different proportions. Okay. In atmosphere, there are many mixtures of gases, water vapor, dust particles and different proportions. Not only this, there are many uh, gases also present in the atmosphere. They are argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, ozone, hydrogen, krypton, xenon, methane and also some uh, water vapor also found in the atmosphere. Apart from this, this uh, it also include dust particles, salt particles, pollen grains, smoke, soot, volcanic ashes, ashes etc. So please listen, what are the composition of the atmosphere? So, atmosphere is a mixture of gases, water vapor and dust particle in different proportions. What are the different proportions? Nitrogen, mainly nitrogen. How many percentage nitrogen in atmosphere? 78 percentage and oxygen 21 percentage. These two are the permanent gases of the atmosphere. Sometimes they may ask question, which are the two permanent gases of the atmosphere? Nitrogen and oxygen. They constitute 99 percentage of the total composition and the percentage always remain the same without any change. The remaining 1 percentage is occupied by argon that is 0.93 percentage, carbon dioxide 0.03 percentage, 
neon 0.0018 percentage helium 0.0005 percentage ozone 0.0006 percentage and hydrogen 0.0005 percentage and for this contain 1 percentage okay next one krypton xenon and methane are also present in the atmosphere and also water vapor how much water vapor is found in the atmosphere that is 0 to 0 0.4 percentage is also found in the atmosphere which plays an important role in predicting weather phenomena so the other solid particles also present in the atmosphere can you say which are the solid particles present in the atmosphere they are the dust particle salt particle pollen grains smoke so volcanic ashes etc or you meant by the meaning so that means ashes okay next one in 1772 see daniel rutherford discovered nitrogen in atmosphere so in 1774 joseph priestley discovered oxygen in atmosphere sometimes they may ask question who has discovered nitrogen in atmosphere that is daniel rutherford next to who has discovered oxygen in atmosphere joseph priestley next one is the which is the most important thing for the living organism that is the oxygen okay oxygen is most important for living organisms we all will take in oxygen and lay out carbon dioxide is that it so in the atmosphere we have this oxygen also so which is the most important uh, gas for the living organism so oxygen is the most important for living organism so carbon dioxide absorbs heat and keeps the atmosphere warm by insulation and radiation next one nitrogen act as a dilute and is chemically inactive so ozone helps in protecting the earth from harmful ultraviolet radiations what is the useful for ozone so it is a very very important one ozone will help the earth from harmful ultraviolet radiations that is directly the, from the sun's rays it is falling it will protect us from the sun's rays the solid particle in the atmosphere act as nuclei on which water vapor contents to form precipitation so students next one is the structure of the atmosphere what do you know about this structure of the atmosphere the atmosphere is thick near the earth's surface and thin out until it eventually merged with the space so listen what was the structure of the atmosphere it is thick near the earth's surface and thin uh, until it eventually merged with space so mostly this structure of the atmosphere there are five atmospheric layers do you know what are the five atmospheric layers what are the five atmospheric layers they are the troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere apart from this there is one more sphere that is magnetosphere okay once again i am saying there are how many uh, layers of atmosphere atmosphere has five layers what are they the five atmospheric layers are troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and exosphere okay now we are going to learn about these things one by one in detail troposphere what do you mean by this troposphere tropo troposphere means in tamil we will say keeladukku okay the lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere what do you mean by troposphere students listen the lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere so the in greek word tropos means turn or change okay what do you mean by this what do you mean by troposphere the lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere so in greek word it was considered as turn or change the, the, in this layer how much it was extend means up to 8 kilometer at the pole and up to 18 kilometer at the equator 
listen the stroposphere it has extend up to 8 km at the poles poles north pole and south pole and up to 18 km at the equator okay the temperature decreases with increasing height how in this portion the temperature decreases with increasing height almost all weather phenomena take place in this layer so sometimes they may ask question in which sphere the weather will take place that is the troposphere so weather phenomena will take place in troposphere so hence it is called as weather making layer so what is the another name for troposphere it is the weather making layer sometimes they may ask one word question which was considered as the weather making layer that is the troposphere the upper limit of the troposphere is called as tropopause okay listen once again uh, what do you mean by troposphere the lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere so how much it was extend means at the poles it is 8 kilometer near the equator it is up to a, uh, 18 kilometer at the equator so what is the another name for this troposphere it is the weather making layer okay so uh, upper limit of the troposphere is called as tropopause next one second one is the stratosphere stratosphere means what it was means it lies above the troposphere it extends to a height of about 50 km above earth's surface from the earth's surface it was extend up to height of 50 km so since this layer is a concentration of ozone molecule it is also referred as ozonosphere please listen next one is the stratosphere stratosphere lies why it was means it is above the troposphere from the earth's surface uh, above 50 km it was considered so in this layer uh, what was there means ozone molecule was present okay uh, so in which layer ozone molecule is present means stratosphere so it is referred as ozonosphere so it is another name for stratosphere children uh, that is the ozonosphere here the temperature increases with increase in height in this layer there in the troposphere what we have learned that a temperature decreases with increasing height at the same time in the stratosphere the temperature increases with increase in height in this layer so mostly in this layer what was uh, seen means jet planes normally fly here which was flying here jet plane the upper limit of the stratosphere is called as stratopause okay the upper limit of the troposphere is called as tropopause at the same time the upper limit of the stratosphere is called as stratopause okay do you understand next one is the mesosphere mesosphere what do you mean by this mesos mesosphere in tamil we will say idai adukku okay so how much it was extend means 50 km and 80 km here how the temperature was means it decreases with increasing height okay students mesosphere how the temperature was temperature decreases with increasing height according to the height it will be degrees here mostly the radio waves are transmitted from the earth or reflected back to earth from this layer this layer which waves was transmitted means mesosphere radio waves was transmitted most of the meteoroids nearing the earth get burnt here the uppermost limit of the mesosphere is the mesopause okay so most of the meteoroids what do you mean by meteoroids in tamil we will say vinkal vinkarkal okay when it reach near this mesosphere it will get burnt uh, why you can see this well, what waves can be transmitted in this uh, sphere radio waves so once again you can recall what you meant by mesosphere uh, mesosphere extend between 50 km and 80 km here the temperature decreases with increasing height and what waves was transmitted 
radio waves was transmitted from the earth and again it was get back to the earth from this layer so what you can see in this mostly most of the metroids nearing the earth get banned here the uppermost limit of the mesosphere is the mesospause so already we have learned the uppermost layer of the troposphere is called tropopause the uppermost layer of the stratosphere is called a stratopause here the uppermost layer layer of the mesosphere is called as mesopause next one is the thermosphere so what do you mean by thermo thermo thermosphere means it is a heat isn't it in tamil we will say vepa adukku okay thermosphere how much it was extend means about 600 km how much it was extended 600 km thermosphere exist above the mesosphere and it extend about 600 km the composition of gas is the lower thermosphere is more or less uniform here the gases will be uniform so hence it is called as homosphere so thermosphere is also called as homosphere why it means here the gases in the lower thermosphere is more or less uniform so hence it is called as homosphere here the upper portion of the thermosphere has uneven composition of gas and hence it is referred, referred as heterosphere homosphere heterosphere homosphere heterosphere what do you understand about this the um, gases in the lower thermosphere is more or less uniform okay so it is called as homosphere the upper portion the thermosphere has uneven composition of gases it is not equal so hence it is referred as heterosphere here the temperature increases with increasing height okay next yes mostly in this thermosphere what was found means ionosphere is a layer of the thermosphere that contain iron and free electrons so what you can see in this thermosphere means iron and electrons so ionosphere is the layer of the thermosphere so sometimes they may ask question which is the layer of the thermosphere that is the ionosphere why it was considered as the layer of the thermosphere means they contain ions and free electrons okay next one is the uh, magnetosphere from the word itself you can understand it is the magnetic belt isn't it it lies beyond the exosphere so it is the earth's magnetic belt where proton and electron coming out from the sun are trapped by the earth the magnetic field extend to around 64000 km above the earth so magnetosphere why you can say means beyond the exosphere it is the earth's magnetic belt okay which is the earth magnetic belt that is the magnetosphere so uh, how much it was extend means 64000 km above the earth next last one is the exosphere exosphere so it is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere sometimes they may ask question which is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere that is the exosphere so the uppermost layer of the atmosphere is called exosphere Okay, this layer is extremely rare filled with gases and gradually merge with the outer space this zone is covered by aurora australia and aurora borealis so mostly it is found in the outside of the atmosphere so exosphere in tamil we will say it is veli aduk okay so mostly what was seen in this aurora uh, australia and aurora borealis aurora what do you mean by this aurora what we can see in the night midnight in the sky you can see this is the cosmic glowing light produced by a stream of electron discharged from the sun's surface how it was formed means due to magnetic storms the resin has unique multicolored firework hanging in the polar sky during midnight so auroras what you can see means in the sky uh, due to this sun's a uh, magnetic surface it was seen uh, with a unique uh, multicolored fireworks like a uh, firecrackers you are seeing you know, like that it will be seen with multicolored next one weather and climate 
what do you mean by this weather and climate these are the terms that are related to atmospheric conditions what do you mean by this weather weather and climate weather denote the way the atmosphere behaves every day and climate reveals the average of weather condition please listen student there is one important question also uh, distinguish between weather and climate so what do you mean by weather this both weather and climate are the terms that are related to the atmospheric conditions so what do you mean by weather weather means it will be uh, denote the day and uh, the way the atmosphere behaves every day have each and every day how it was changing like that it will be uh, explained and climate climate means it reveals the average of weather condition or lately long period of time for for example one year two year like that so the difference between the two may be clearly understood in the following table okay so there are many factors uh, that influence weather and climate do you know which are the factors influence weather and climate uh, distance from the equator altitude nearness to the sea nature of the prevailing winds mountain barrier cold cover uh, sorry cloud cover ocean currents and natural vegetations once again i'm saying what are the factors that influence weather and climate that uh, distance from the equator altitude nearness to the sea nature of the prevailing winds mountain barrier cloud cover ocean currents distance from the equator okay and natural vegetation so one by one about this detail we are going to learn first one is the distance from the equator equator means zero degree equator isn't it so distance how it was then here the sun's rays fall vertically on the equator so you all know already you have learned in the lower classes how this if the sun's ray fall vertically means it will be very hot if the slanting means very cool it is not too hot than the vertical the sun rays fall vertically mostly on the equator so the rays are inclined on the regions away from the equator and near the pole so it will be inclined away from the equator near the pole due to the spherical shape of the earth the vertical rays heat up the earth more than the inclined rays so if the rays are vertical it will be very hot and it is inclined means very cold this the place near the equator are warmer than the place which are far away from the equator so near the equator how it will be it will be very hot at the same time far away from the equator it will be uh, not too hot now we can learn about the difference between weather and climate so distinguish between weather and climate there is one question roman number 5 first question this one only distinguish between weather and climate please listen carefully weather what do you mean by this weather weather is the study of atmospheric conditions for short duration over small areas so what do you mean by weather weather is the study of atmospheric conditions for short duration over small areas at the same time climate what do you mean by climate climate is the study of the average weather condition observed over a long period of time for a large area okay what do you mean by weather weather is the study of atmospheric conditions for short duration over small areas what do you mean by climate climate is the study of the average weather condition observed over a long period of time for a large area second point the weather changes very often how to how and day to day at the same time climate is more or less permanent and remain the same always okay this then here the weather changes very often uh, each hour hour to hour and day to day also it will be changed at the same time climate will be permanent 
and remain the same always. Okay. Third point is a place can experience different types of weather conditions in a day. Okay. Uh, for example, we can say one one place. Uh, any one place for example Kanyagumari you take it will be take different types of weather conditions in a day a day with a hot morning can have a rainy noon okay same day in the morning we can say it will be very hot at the same time in the evening it will be very rainy okay so a place can experience different types of weather conditions in a day example a day with a hot morning can have a rainy noon at the same day in the climate, a place can experience almost the same type of climate. Okay, listen carefully. Uh, how it was uh, the weather, a place can experience different types of weather conditions in a day. Particular day, morning if it is hot means at noon or at evening it will be rainy. Same time the climate, it is not like that. It will be almost the same type of climate. Next one, weather, weather data is collected every day in the observations. Okay, so weather data is collected every day in the observatories. Climate is average of the weather data. So which is the average of the weather data? Climate. L last point is study of weather is called metrology. Here the study of climate is called climatology. Okay. This is very very important for stream. The distinguish between weather and climate. First, there are five points. So, first one, once again, we can recall weather is the study of atmospheric conditions, climate is the study of average weather conditions. Here, weather it is for short duration or small areas, climate a long period for a large area. Okay, next second one, the weather changes very often, hour to hour and day to day. At the same time, climate is more or less permanent and remains the same always. Next point, a place can experience different types of weather conditions in a day. At the same time, the climate, a place can experience almost the same type of climate. Here, weather data is collected every day, climate average of the weather data so study of weather is called metrology study of climate is called climatology so did you understand next you can see this altitude what do you mean by altitude here altitude refers to the height above mean sea level what do you mean by altitude in Tamil, we will say Kadal Matathilir in the Uyaram. Okay. Altitude refers to the height above sea level. Okay. What do you mean by this? It is the height above sea level. Here, the temperature decreases at the rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer of height. So, this is called normal lapse rate. Okay. How much temperature it was decreases? 6.5. 5 degree Celsius per kilometer of height. So, this is called as normal lapse rate. So, places of the higher altitude have a lower temperature. Suppose if there is a higher altitude, how the temperature will be? Temperature will be low. Okay, students. Next one is the nearness to the sea. Nearness to the sea. What do you know about this nearness to the sea? From this two picture, what you understand? One day and next one is the night, isn't it? Already you have studied in the 8th standard also. During daytime, uh, which will get hot. Um, and uh, see the places located, which will be hot and which will be um, cold. During the daytime, the land will get heated more than the ocean at the same time during night the land cool more rapidly than the ocean okay already in the lower class you have learned sea breeze and land breeze isn't it 
So nearness to the sea, here the climate of a place varies according to its nearness to the sea. Places near the coast experience equable climate due to the influence of the winds from the sea. Places located inland far from the sea does not experience the moderating influence of the sea. Such places experience a continental type of climate. Okay. So, which will uh, experience the continental type of climate means places located inland far from the sea does not experience the moderating influence of the sea. Such places experience a continental type of climate that is the land. Next one, land breeze and sea breeze. What do you mean by this land breeze and sea breeze? So, what is called sea breeze? There is one question also. They are distinguished between land breeze and sea breeze. That is Roman number 5, question number 2. Distinguished between land breeze and sea breeze. So, during the day, the land masses get heated more rapidly than the ocean. Uh, you all know, during daytime, the land will get heated more rapidly. What do you mean by rapidly, quickly, very fast than the ocean? Heated air ascended and this causes low pressure on the adjoining ocean. Therefore, the wind blows from ocean to land is the afternoon. This is called as sea breeze. So, sea breeze, it will help to reduce the temperature of the coastal region, especially during the summer season. Summer season, it will help to reduce the temperature uh, of the which portion coastal region. So, what, do you, what is called a sea breeze? During daytime, the land, land masses get heated more quickly than the oceans. So, the wind blow from ocean to land is the afternoon. This is called a sea breeze. Okay. Well, next one is the, what do you mean by land breeze? Here, during night, the land cools more rapidly than the ocean. The opposite of that, isn't it? The, during the night, which will get to cool, land cool more rapidly than the ocean. Here, cold air sinks and forms high pressure. The wind blows from land to sea during the night. This is called as land breeze. Okay. So, distinguish between sea breeze and land breeze. So, what do you mean by that? During the day, the land masses get heated more rapidly than the ocean. The wind blows from ocean to land in the afternoon. This is called sea breeze. During the night, the land cools more rapidly than the ocean. The wind blows from land to sea during the night. This is called land breeze. Next one is the nature of the prevailing wind. What do you mean by this nature of the prevailing wind? The wind changes the climate of a place based on from where they blow. When wind blows from a warm region, it, is, uh, it makes the place warm and cold. When blows from a colder region, the onshore wind causes rainfall, making the place cool, whereas the offshore wind brings dry weather. So, nature of the prevailing wind. What do you know about this? The wind changes the climate of the place. So, which will change the climate of the place? The wind. From uh, When wind blow from warm region, it makes the place warm and cold. When wind blow from the uh, colder region, the onshore wind causes rainfall, making the place cool, whereas the offshore wind brings dry weather. Okay. Next point is mountain barriers. Next one is the mountain barriers. Uh, what do you mean by this? So, mountain barriers. Uh, barrier means that, isn't it? The location of the mountain influences the climate of the place. The mountain chain acts as the natural barrier for the wind. So, sometimes they prevent the entry of the cold wind into the country or the escape of monsoon wind, this having a great influence over the climate. So, what do you mean by this mountain barrier? Mountain barrier, it is the chain act as a natural barrier for the wind. Okay. Sometimes, 
they prevent the entry of cold wind into the country or the escape of monsoon wind this having the great influence over the climate so uh, it, will, it will act as the barrier which one was acting as a barrier mountain uh, because of that mountain only sometimes we are getting rain and uh, it will prevent it from the cold wind next one is the the windward side uh, of a mountain which faces the prevailing wind it receives heavy rainfall this is also one of the important question uh, the leeward side of the mountain in the side sheltered from the wind it receives very less rainfall okay the windward side and the leeward side distinguish between windward side and leeward side this is roman number 5 question number 3 distinguish between windward side and leeward side uh, the windward uh, is the side of the mountain which faces the prevailing wind it receives heavy rainfall at the same time the leeward side of the mountain is the side sheltered from the wind it receives very less rainfall okay next one uh, is the cold cover okay next one is the cold cover what do you know about this cold cover uh, cloud sorry cloud cover this cloud cover cover means it will be reflect a large amount of radiations from the sun, uh, sun. okay clouds what do you mean by this cloud uh, cloud reflect a large amount of radiations from the sun this prevent the entry of heat of the earth's surface so directly if more clouds are found means the heat won't uh, affect our earth so it in the area generally of cloudless sky like the desert temperature is very high on the other hand under cloudy sky the temperature is low so cloud cover because of this cloud cover what is the important what is the use of that uh, it will protect us from the direct sunlight okay cloud reflect a large amount of radiations from the sun so this prevent the entry of heat of the earth's surface so in areas generally of cloudless sky like the desert temperature is very high at the same time cloudy sky the temperature is low next one is the ocean currents the warm ocean current raises the temperature of the nearby coastal areas while the cold current lowers the temperature of a place ocean current what do you mean by this ocean current warm ocean current cold ocean current so the uh, warm ocean current the temperature of the nearby coastal areas while the cold ocean current lower the temperature of a place okay next last one is the natural vegetation what do you mean by this natural vegetation here the trees release water vapor into the air and makes it cool you all know from the trees what is also released carbon dioxide also released at the same time water vapor also released because of that what happen means the air will get cool and it makes the surroundings cool this forest area have lower range of temperature throughout the year in contrast to non forested areas okay students so the natural vegetation because of this natural vegetation the trees will release water vapor into the air and make it cool so or you can see more cool air means near the forest areas having lower range of temperature throughout the year in contrast to non forested areas if there is no forest area it will be very hot okay uh, now next portion we can learn in the next class a few questions i am going to mark it only a little question only please uh, study well first roman number 1 choose the best answer roman number 1 choose the best answer first one um, dash is the most important gas for the survival of living organism which is the most important gas for the survival of living organism that is the oxygen okay option c is the correct answer so please students mark it option c second one the lowest layer of the atmosphere is troposphere option a okay third one dash reflect radio waves which uh, reflect radio waves mesosphere that is option c 
so choose three uh, questions first one option c second one option a third one option c next roman number 3 answer the following briefly define atmosphere define atmosphere that is page number 180 i'll take page number 180 in your book uh, first para fourth line the blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere it is held close to the earth by gravitational attraction next uh, heading composition of the atmosphere and there are also three lines atmosphere is a mixture of gases water vapor and dust particles in different proportions okay students once again i am reading define atmosphere this is very very important question page number 180 uh, first para under the introduction para fourth line the blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere it is held close to the earth by gravitational attraction next uh, under the heading composition of the atmosphere first three line atmosphere is a mixture of gases water vapor and dust particles in different proportion the same question okay Second question, name the different atmospheric layer. That also page number 180. May name the different atmospheric layer. Under the heading, structure of the atmosphere. Um, name the different atmospheric layer. What are the different atmospheric layer? Page number 180. Under the heading, structure of the atmosphere. Third line. The five atmospheric layers are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Okay, that's all. Next, uh, third question. Mention the factors that affect the climate. That on page number 181. Mention the factors that affect weather and climate. That is page number 181. Under the heading, there are many factors that influence weather and climate, isn't it? Um, eight points are there. That one is the Roma number three, question number third one. So, uh, there are many factors that influence weather and climate. Are. So, you want to start the answer like this. Factors that influence weather and climate are distance from the equator, altitude, Nearness to the sea, nature of the prevailing winds, mountain barrier, cloud cover, ocean currents, natural vegetations. Next, um, distinguish between. Okay, the first question here also three questions I will mark and give weather distinguish between weather and climate. That is page number 182 distinguish between weather and climate that is page number 182 there are one tabular column you can see isn't it weather and climate there are five points also there that on your market weather is the study of atmospheric conditions for short duration over small areas climate is the study of the average weather condition observed over a long period of time for a large area the weather changes very often hour to hour and day to day Climate is more or less permanent and remains the same always. A place can experience different types of weather conditions in a day. Example, a day with a hot morning can have a rainy noon. A place can experience almost the same type of climate. Weather data is collected every day in the observation. Climate is average of the weather data. Study of weather is called meteorology. Study of climate is called climatology. Up to that, Roman number 5, question number 1. Okay, that is page number 182. Next one, second question, distinguish between land breeze and sea breeze. That is page number 183. Okay, 183 under the heading fact. Mm, sorry, do you know? Okay, under the heading. Distinguish between land breeze and sea breeze. Sorry, under the heading fact, Roman number 5, question number 2. Listen, during the day, the land 
mass get heated more rapidly than the ocean. Next, second line, the wind blows from ocean to land in the afternoon. This is called sea breeze. Up to that, next para, during the night, the land cools more rapidly than the ocean. Next line, the wind blows from land to sea during the night. This is called land breeze. Okay, students. So, once again, I am saying distinguish between land breeze and sea breeze. That is page number 183. During the day, the land masses get heated more rapidly than the ocean. Uh, the wind blows from ocean to land in the afternoon. This is called sea breeze. During the night, the land cools more rapidly than the ocean. The wind blows from land to sea during the night. This is called land breeze. Okay. Next, third question. Distinguish between windward side and leeward side. Leeward side. That is page number 183. Do you know? You see that paraphrase. So, the windward is the side of a mountain which faces the prevailing wind. It receives heavy rainfall. The leeward side of a mountain is the side sheltered from the wind. It receives very less rainfall. So, Roman number 5, question number 3, page number 183. Do you know that one fully? Okay. The windward side is the side of a mountain which faces the prevailing wind. It receives heavy rainfall. The leeward side of a mountain is the side sheltered from the wind. It receives very less rainfall. Next, one paragraph question I am going to mark. That is Roman number 6, question number 1. Write a paragraph about the structure of the atmosphere. That is page number 180, 181. Okay. Listen. Write a paragraph about the structure of the atmosphere. Page number 180 and 181. I'll take page number 180. Under page number 180. Um, Write a paragraph about the structure of the atmosphere under the heading structure of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is thick near the earth's surface and thin out until it eventually merge with the space. Okay. So, the five atmospheric layers are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. About this detail you want to learn. Troposphere. So I will short and more tell you. Okay. Troposphere. What is that? The lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere. Next the layer extend up to 8 km to the poles and up to 18 km at the equator. The temperature decreases with increasing height. So almost all weather phenomena take place in this layer. Hence it is called weather making layer. So, the upper limit of the troposphere is called as tropospause. Next one, stratosphere. Stratosphere lies above the troposphere. It extends to a height of about 50 km above its surface. Uh, since this layer is a concentration of ozone molecule, it is also referred as ozonosphere. The temperature increases the increase in height in this layer. So, the upper limit of the stratosphere is called as stratospause. Next one, mesosphere. There is also mesosphere extend between 50 km and 80 km. The temperature decreases with increasing height. Radio waves transmitted from earth are reflected back to earth from this layer. So here the uppermost limit of the mesosphere is the mesopause. Next one, thermosphere. Thermosphere exists above the mesosphere, ex extend to about 600 km. Here the temperature increases with increasing height. Next, uh, exosphere. Uh, thermosphere, once again I am reading. Thermosphere exists above the mesosphere. It extends to about 600 km. Uh, next, the composition of gases in the lower thermosphere is more or less uniform. Hence, it is called homosphere. The upper portion of the thermosphere has uneven composition of gas and hence it is referred as heterosphere. Here the temperature increases the increasing height. Uh, so what uh, ionosphere is a layer of the thermosphere that contains ions and free electrons. Next last one is the exosphere. 
The uppermost layer of the atmosphere is called exosphere. This layer is extremely rare fed with gases and gradually merges with the outer space. Okay, students. So, please study thoroughly and uh, with this lesson, only few questions I have given. So, thank you, students.